All right, Shalom and Barakim La Habayath, my Dabada, blessings to the house of David. And the Akim Wa Akwath, the brothers and sisters that also make up the one third of the nation of Israel who also listen and believe on the glorious gospel. And to you, I say Shalom, all praises, infinite honor and glory be to our power, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh who is the God of heaven and earth. And also honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like minded elders is teaching his word truthfully and in sincerity. All praises once again be to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh It's a quick impromptu video. I don't plan on it being too long, but I just wanted to touch on this article um, here and just bring a few precepts out through the spirit because um, this is a um, an example of where the culture is currently today, right? This is the um, what is known as a popular culture today, right? Which is also in line with the influence of who's ruling, which the scriptures tell us Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. So currently Esau is ruling. And we know that also through the precepts that Esau, 2 Ezra 6, tells us Esau, 2 Ezra 6 and 9, that is, tells us Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So we know we're at the end of the rule of the last ruling Gentile nation, which is the Edomites. They will be ruling last. So once again, this popular culture, this is the mindset. This article goes into that mindset of popular culture, the mindset of this generation, which is uh, basically like a microcosm, you know, of the uh, of Western culture. It's the epitome of what Western culture is, Western culture being Edomite culture, so-called European culture, white culture, etc. This is Edomite culture. So this is what they pushed. This is the wine of Babylon that has basically, you know, destroyed the earth. You know, the philosophies, the mindset, the um, the lack of morals, ethics and scruples. That's what we see. So without further ado, I'll get into this article. It says almost 75 percent of millennials and 67 percent of Generation Z say money can buy happiness. Just that idea, that thought process is just it's twisted. It's off. And that is the spirit that's in the earth that's pushed through Western culture, right? Popular culture today. So it says almost 75% of millennials, that's three quarters, three out of four millennials, right? Believe that money can buy you happiness. And 67% of Gen Generation Z say money can buy happiness. What are the younger generations thinking when it comes to their finances. So the idea that that this is the mindset in Babylon is not that's not so inconceivable, but it's the it's it's the show and the push of what the culture is. It's a reflection of what the reality is today. That's why the most high through his uh, only begotten son has to destroy Babylon and that this place is falling fast. And it has to be soon, because the scriptures say or no flesh would be saved. We read in Matthew, the 24th chapter, right? No flesh would be saved if this place wasn't going to be destroyed. This culture would continue to just pollute more and more um, of the earth to the point where we wouldn't make it out of here. Esau would actually, you know, make good on his his devices, his plans, his thoughts, his schemes. Now, this is December the 4th, 2023 from AOL. Um, and it says almost 75 percent of millennials. And once again, 67% of Generation Z say money can buy happiness, right? What are the younger generations thinking when it comes to finances? The current economic climate is giving plenty of Americans grief, but younger generations who are likely kicking off their careers or hoping to purchase their first homes are feeling particularly strained by their finances. More than half of Americans say money can buy happiness according to a recent survey. So just the idea that people would even think in this manner, in this way, it just shows you and it tells you what's wrong with the world today and why this place is almost out of here. Millions of Americans are in massive debt in the face of rising rates because the average person doesn't believe here on the earth today, here in America, here in the Western world, don't believe that they're in slavery, as the scriptures say, right? We are yet this day in our captivity 
where we are subject to payments. Now it goes on to say, millions of Americans are in massive debt in the face of rising rates. Here's how to get your your head above water ASAP. So it goes into right some things that's wrong. Now it goes on to say, what does financial happiness really mean? If you ask the respondents in the study, the majority say they would feel content if they didn't have to rely on anybody else financially. And if they had the ability to withstand unexpected expenses and take care of their own loved ones with inflation and the cost of borrowing and see a lot of what, what I just read pushes is the push of uh, feminism. You know, this idea, because a lot more women are in the workforce and earning, you know, at the highest rates that women have ever earned and are more educated, you know, so on and so forth. That's the idea of not feeling like they want or need to have anyone else to help them because by nature you have a man and a woman, you know, together where, you know, in a righteous world, that's the balance. That's the balance, right? You have each other to, to balance life out, you know, going through the, the ebbs and flows of life, the ups and downs. Well, if you are, you know, with someone, a person could get sick, anything could happen. Right. But the mindset is that people don't want to um, have to depend on anyone because we, we live in a narcissistic world where it's all about me and self. Right. Which the scriptures speak about all that. Right. Because it'll be a time on the earth. The Bible says where men will become lovers of their own selves. And we know through um, what is it? social media is a great example of that. It says with inflation and the cost of borrowing still high, 67 percent say their income is in keeping up with inflation. And 42% feel their standard of living is deteriorating. Many young Americans are dealing with the current economic climate by relying on their parents to support them. For example, multi-generational living arrangements are on the rise, meaning you got a lot of children. You know, you have a lot of uh, children of Generation uh, Z who are moving in with their parents. That's going on more and more. Now... It goes on to say, um, and for folks who have been able to buy their first home in a difficult housing market, some have still required financial aid from their loved ones to offset the cost. More than a fifth of Americans, right, this would be 20%, use a cash gift or loan from their family or friends for their down payment recently, according to the National Association of Realtors. Now, this just goes on this article to speak more about all of what's going on financially and economically that's causing all these problems. But the, the mindset here, as you see, is that 75% um, of, it says millennials and Generation Z say that money can buy happiness, that they actually believe this. Now, let me get this other article here. Just to line it up before we get a few quick precepts, wanted to touch on this with with the mindset being that I want to show the contrast right so here's the contrast so here this is an article from AOL and it says America this is going into Robert Kawasaki right who wrote the, the book Rich Dad Poor Dad which was actually a, a really good read I read it years ago right it says America is in serious trouble. Robert Kawasaki warns the U.S. is broke, bankrupt, and our dollar is trash, says the printing, and says that printing money to solve problems can't go on much longer, right? And it says, is he right? Now, what we see is the contrast between the millennials and then you have those that were in the survey in Generation Z and then you have the reality of what's going on, you know, today and the mindset the the reality of what's of what's going on. But the mindset is not in line with reality is the thing I'm, I'm the point I'm trying to make. Right. So this guy here is a baby boomer. So he comes from a whole different generation. So in this generation now, the reality of a, of a, a, a top economist, you know, or someone that is. You know, heavily into the financial sector, things like that, prospectors, so on and so forth. 
people that work on the stock, work in the stock market and so on and so forth. The reality is that this place is falling. It's faltering. The system of governance. So it says America, once again, is in serious trouble and is broke and is bankrupt and the dollar is trash. So that's a far. Um, that's a big uh, let me go back to this article. That's a big contrast to what we're seeing. Right. With those that are in. Um, Generation Z. The millennials today. We see a, a stark contrast between the two. And I just wanted to touch on that as we get into a few precepts that come to mind. Because that's what's, this is the example of what's wrong with this generation today. This is a prime example. Now, let's get a few precepts just to just go into that. I started with speaking about how Job 9 and 24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So that's who's ruling. The wicked Esau Edom. Is ruling today when you read the Malachi the first chapter, he's known as the border of wickedness, the so called white man. Now, here's a precept that comes to mind as well. This is in the book of uh, Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Now, the title here, the subtitle heading is on life and conduct, going into how we're supposed to live and our conduct. Now, let's get right here Proverbs 23 and 4. It says, Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. So, we're not supposed to labor. It says, to be rich. Now, when you read this in the NLT, it says here, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. It's like being, you know, in Vegas and gambling. You have people that have gambling addictions. Well, you know, ultimately, that's the mindset of a lot of people. They're out gambling, right, in the spirit, not knowing that there's going to have to be a recompense for the way the ways that they've lived. You know, and for you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, for you living contrary to truth. So Proverbs 23 and 4 in the NLT, again, don't wear out yourself trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. So we're not supposed to cease or we're not supposed to, um, to lock here, labor to be rich, but cease from our own wisdom. Verse 5, in the point, will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Now it says in the NLT, in the blink of an eye, wealth disappears. For it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. And that's the saying in the world that money comes and money goes. Right? It's never always the same. It's ever changing. So this is the mindset that we should have when it comes to money, which is a mindset having a spiritual mind. Not a worldly mindset that money can buy you happiness or buy you love, which that's all totally incorrect. You know, when you when you examine the words of truth, which we're supposed to live, the scriptures say to set our affection in the wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter upon these words. Now, this is the words of Yahweh Shah, our Lord. This is uh, Luke 16 and verse nine. I'll start there and I'll read down Luke 16 and nine. And it reads. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends. It says, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, which is what the money, the wealth and things that you have here on the earth, the material wealth and money, right? Which mammon goes into money. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, it says who will commit to your trust the true riches. These are the words of Yahweh Shah. So if you don't know how to deal with the unrighteous mammon, which is money and wealth, material wealth on the earth, how are you going to be able to really deal with the true riches? Now, when you go into the scriptures, one example of many of the true riches is Romans, the 11th chapter. Here's one example, right? And there's, there's plenty of them. Here's one, Romans 11 and 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the most high. 
how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So the depth of riches in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yerushai, is of the knowledge of the Heavenly Father. That's also found in the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 26 and 4, whether a man be rich or poor, he will all he will at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance, basically, the scriptures say. Why is that? Because you have the true riches. Now, going back to Luke 16 and 11, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the, unjust, in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches, which is the depth of riches, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? Living according to faith in the word. Verse 12, and if you have not been faithful in that, which is, it says, which is another's, another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Verse 13, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve the Heavenly Father and Mammon. And we see clearly this generation has no mind and no spirit to want to serve the Most High God of Heaven and Earth, going into, you know, Millennials, Generation Z. They have no mind to want to serve the God of heaven and earth. That's the last thing on the average person's mind here today living in the Western culture. They truly don't believe they're a godless, faithless, you know, generation, which it tells you in, in um, not Wisdom of Solomon, in the book of, what is that? Oh, it tells you in the book of Psalm, the 14th chapter, the fifth verse, that Yahweh the Most High is in a generation of the righteous. So the Lord is with the righteous. Now I ended out with this. This is the book of First Timothy, the sixth chapter. When you go to First Timothy six, um, starting here at verse six, First Timothy six is six, telling us the mindset we're supposed to have as it pertains to money. No money cannot buy us, us happiness. Money is a defense, but wisdom is also a defense against unrighteousness, against wickedness. Us having this wisdom is how we armor ourselves with the full armor of Yahweh Bashem Yerushai. So, yeah, money is a defense. You know, it is a help. And, yeah, it, it, it would be better to have more of it if we could. But we're not supposed we're not supposed to um, set our hearts and our affections upon mammon. Right. And material wealth. You know, and, and it's, it's the epitome you know, of being um, worldly. Right. First Timothy six and verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So having what we need is really the greatest wealth that you could have. Give us this day our daily bread, the scriptures say. Now here in the NLT, it says, yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. That's great wealth. That's the depth of riches we read about in Romans 11 and 33. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. So the things that you have here, guess what? It can't go with you. Even for those of us who pray and hope that we are of the elect and make it on a chariot. That's looking for the coming of our Lord, right? We can't take nothing we have here with us on a chariot. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, having what you need. In the NLT, it says, 1 Timothy 6 and 8. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. So we, we're supposed to be content with having what we need, not just filling our lusts and our desires and our bellies, right? It should be more about living uprightly, and wanting to be more spiritual and live according to the words of the Heavenly Father. Because the scriptures tell us in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, to fear Ha'adawan, to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. For that's the whole duty. That's the whole purpose of us being here. Right? Not to just feel our own flesh and lustly desires. First Timothy 6 and 9. But that, but they, Salakia, that will be rich fall into temptations. Now we read, when we go back to Proverbs 23 and 4, it told us, let me go back there real quick. We close it out, right? Proverbs 23 and 4, because it says that, but they that will be rich fall into temptation. And it says, and a, and, to, and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So now, why is that important? When you go back to Proverbs 23 and 4, it says, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. So we're not supposed to labor with the mindset of being rich. First Timothy six and nine, it says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, 
which drown men in destruction and perdition. So that's not uh, uh, serving the Heavenly Father according to his will. You can't love the Heavenly Father and love mammon, right? You will love one and hate the other. First Timothy 6 and ver verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, not money itself, but the love of money, which is what, which is what we see in articles like this. This is showing the true love of money, the love of wealth, the love of society, the love of Western culture, right? This is, this is what this is showing. It's showing you the true heart and mind of people. First Timothy 6 and 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, see loving money, many people err from the faith. They go in the way of wickedness because of that lust and that desire for money. So a man that, that would have all he needs, a, how, how concerned would, would a person be, a man or, and or woman, right, for that matter? How concerned would they be with, with, with doing the work of the Heavenly Father? Truly, which while they have erred, which which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, meaning they, they depart from doing righteousness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Verse 11, but thou, O man of the Most High, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness, which is what a believer would have today. A member of the elect would have these things, right? They will be following after righteousness and godliness, having faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now, before I close it out, one that comes to mind, I think it's uh, Proverbs. It should be Proverbs. The, um, what is that? Proverbs, the 30th chapter should be. Proverbs 30. Because it was speaking about, you know, um, the mindset we should have as it pertains to money. Now, this is Proverbs 30 and verse um, 8. Let me highlight this. Proverbs 30 and verse 8. And it reads, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient with, for me, which is the same thing we read here in 1 Timothy 6, you know, which is the mindset we should have. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, having what we need, not abundance, not having uh, excess. Proverbs 30 and verse 8, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord Yahweh? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain. Because Having what we need is the mindset, is having a spiritual mindset, a winning mindset. As the Lord said, don't worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink. Don't get so caught up, you know, into tomorrow. You should be worried about today, having what you need, right? So I pray this lesson was edifying, exhorting, and comforting, which is Philippians 4 and 7, the peace that surpasses all understanding. I want to give all praises, infinite honor and glory unto my power, Yahweh, Bahashem. Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kohalo Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. All praises, infinite honor and glory be to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the God of heaven and earth, the God of the 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like minded elders is teaching this word truthfully and in sincerity. Barak la Habayath, Madawada, blessed to the house of David, right? Which are your brothers pushing this truth on the four corners of the earth and unto the Akim and Agwaf, the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe in the glorious gospel being preached. Unto you, I say, Shalom.